you go through um, 1980, but in 1981, World 600, you had this crash that seriously injured you. Um, what do you remember about that wreck? Uh, only I know I was uh, coming two, four laps down. I don't know how much it was. Uh, Neil was fixing to lap me again. And what I was doing driving that car, I don't know, the year before I parked, when I could go out of a pit stop way in the back and come back and get the lead, and it belonged to Will Cronkite, and every time we make a pit stop, I'd go from first or second to 31st or second, and so I parked. And here I am in, in John Reben's car, and Harry Hyde's crew chief, and can't drive it. You can't drive this thing in all Charlotte City, much less racetrack, and I'm still running. And uh, I can tell you this much. I didn't spin that thing out. But trying too hard because I got more sense than that. Yeah. But I spun out and Dick Brooks hit me and uh, the rest is history. I don't know myself. I don't remember. The next thing I really remember is in Birmingham in the hospital was uh, Steve Meal, Kyle Petty, and him coming to see me in the hospital. Damn. All the way down in Birmingham. Yep. I was when I was back. That's a, that's what I can really actually tell yeah. you. I remember. So, what were your injuries? Well, I had a pretty bad head injury. Uh, I broke my leg real bad. Uh, my cheekbone. Damn. And um, I guess that's that's about enough. <laughs> yeah, that's plenty. So that wreck in 1981 was pretty much the end of your racing career did you race uh short tracks or anything after that? oh I yes mean, i know you ran a couple more cup races oh yes yeah i did uh but were you you know did you mm -hmm. did you when you think back to that time i mean back then you're like you know it was such a different culture it was even different when i started racing like you know you'd bang your head i remember wrecking in daytona and getting a concussion and laughing about it you know oh man i rung my bell wow i'm dizzy i'll be fine and you know, you would you got you got hurt. You hurt your head. You probably thought uh, this will go. This will. I wait. This will get better. When it's better, I'm going to race. Right. That's exactly the way I felt. Yeah. It wasn't was I going to race again. It was when yeah. I was going to race again. Yeah. And so, you know, what was the process? What was that like? You know, when you go back, I'm. I guess there were fewer opportunities. Um, Never after that wreck, Dale, did I have the opportunity to get in a good car. Right. And and it, this hurt me. Now the the best thing I had going was the bush car that my son Kenny built, took care of. That was that twenty three. Twenty three that I red that, and white car that erected Daytona that, at the end of the race that time. That race I should have won. You know, Patty Muiz called that wreck, but uh, uh, I got a lap down at that time. I was on Hoosier tires and. I restarted the race and went down and turned one and hauled to Kenny. I got a flat, Kenny. That was the first lap. Just had got the green. He said, which one is it, Dad? I said, I'm not sure. I said, I'll try to tell you before I get there. Well, I came and made a pit stop and they changed four tires. I lost a lap. Mm -hmm. I ran the whole rest of the race till 12 laps to go or whatever it was, a lap down. I was in the front, but I was a lap down. Well, I got a caution. And, you know, Bobby was running good. Rusty Wallace was running good. Jeff Bodine was running good. And on the restart, I tell my son Kenny, Kenny, if I can dodge all these bullets, we'll win this race. Well, I didn't dodge them all. You know, that's when I crashed real bad and the hood went like a frisbee up in the sands and all that. But uh, uh, at that time, Dale... I never got back in a good cup car because I'm I'm not sure that people knew how bad I was hurt or how well I'd got over it. Right. So they just didn't know. No. And you you couldn't convince them. No. Were you well, racing? You, you know oh, when yeah. you got a head injury, you know the first thing they do they your damaged goods. Yeah. Everybody. Very. When you were you running a short track car anywhere? Oh yeah, yeah. My first race back at BIR. Um, I never forget. I come down the front straight away, and I won the race. And I looked out the window and I said, "Thank you, God. Thank you." 
Yeah. Yeah. And I'll never forget that as long as I live. Um, I, I was probably, Pat could tell you probably better than anybody, I was probably pretty ornery sometimes because I wanted to race and I couldn't. So, but. When did you run your last competitive event? Do you remember? No, my last competitive Cub event was in 88, 1988. Yep. What about short tracks? Um, in the 90s. Really? Yes. Yeah. Wouldn't BIR, BIR went away. In Birmingham International yeah. Raceway. And, and it was, I mean, were you racing at BIR all the way up until then? Which would have been the. Uh, no, no, I, I, at the very end, no, I didn't. Uh, uh, probably my last race in BIR was, uh, well, David got killed in 93, so it was probably 91. Yeah. Early 90s, right. That's yeah. What I, so what was the deciding factor for what well, I mean I always love to ask this question about drivers because it's such a curious thing for me but like what how do you how did you make the decision when you got out of the car the last time whether it was at a short track or wherever how did you make the decision that, that was the final final time for you I didn't it got made for you I guess I don't really know I can't answer that question um because I thought about many a time after I had been out of the car a while, get back in and show somebody what they were doing wrong, yeah. which I was good at anyway. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, it's just like Nemec checks cars. Uh, when I crew chief his cars, he yeah. was a good race car driver and everything like that. But I ran his car five times, and he never ran as fast as I ran. <laughs> I swapped cars with my brother six times. And he never ran as fast as I ran in his own car. Yeah. What about when you see Red still getting it done uh, and still driving and racing at his age? I mean, what what is your thoughts to that? Well, I have two. First of all, he's not going to win. You know, uh, he won a heat race in, in, in the dirt track last this past year. He did, yeah. And somebody told me that their driver let him win it, but – who says what well, i give him credit where is 90 year old man i went last year to, to little town Dega short track and i hadn't been down around his cars in a long time and he's got a footstool one of them little stools to get in the car yeah and so i give him heck about that for all <laughs> I, the time. I said it's pretty bad when you need a damn stool <laughs> or a bench to get in your damn car <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh but i give him credit and yep. you go to the shop, he'll tell you everything about it, all the cars. Mm -hmm. See, he's one of the last of the Mohegans that can tell you every piece of that car, plus work on it, plus drive the hell yeah. out of it. Yeah, yeah. How close are you and your brother throughout your whole career? Oh, very close. Very close. Very, very close. What was the, um, what was that experience like watching him go through his crash? And ha you having went through something somewhat similar in 81, um, but his obviously much much more severe, I imagine. What was that like for you to have to um, watch him go through that? And maybe how did you how did you help him? Well, it was it was really devastating to me. Um, ironically, uh, when Davey got hurt in Pocono, uh, I was at the same golf course on the same hole when both of them got hurt. Damn. Oh wow! And I used to play a lot of golf, and and uh, it was on a Sunday, and I was at Lennon Country Club on the eighth hole, par three, and they didn't come get me when Davey crashed, but they came and told me. They came and got me when Bobby crashed, so I got in the golf cart and I ran. T By the time I got to the clubhouse, they were having a replay on television, and uh, so I called my brother-in-law Donnie Johnson in Hueytown. My farm is 100 miles from Hueytown. And I asked him, was it his head? Yes. Oh, no. Because of my own deal with the head. And so I go home. I tell Pat that I'm going to Allentown. And so... I called Dr. Petty, 
which took care of me when I got hurt. Yeah. The best man took ever. Took care of me. Every time the I best got hurt. man ever. Yeah. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I have a different one now, which is a lady. She's just as good. But anyway, I called Dr. Petty. He said, Donnie, I've already been talking to him at the hospital. He said, it's not good. He says, uh, uh, I'm on a call tonight. He said, but I'll go if you want to go tonight. I said, what time in the morning? He said, pick me up at Butler Aviation at 8 o'clock in the morning. So I called the guy, that, the other guy, other pilot, Bobby's second Aerostar, and I said, what time do we have to leave Bessemer to be at Charlotte at 8 o'clock? At, so he told me. I said, okay, be ready to go. So we stopped and, and picked him up and went to Allentown. And, you know, I, I didn't see me when I was hurt. I mean, I know, I know, I look bad. My brother Eddie tells me all the time, "God Almighty, you know, see how bad you look." She, Pat, you know, I didn't look very. I don't look good anyway. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, we get there and Petty goes right on back in. You know, he's the doctor. I'm out there in the waiting room and he comes out and gets me. He says, "You want to go see him?" I said, "Yes, I do." He said, "It's not pretty." So I go back and he's got all these tubes in him and all this stuff. You know, and I'm holding his hand. He's not moving. And so we get done with that trip. We get back in the airplane going back to Charlotte. And Petty, he doesn't really say anything about Bobby much, about the injury or nothing. And he said, Wednesday morning, 8 o'clock. In other words, I'm going to pick him up Wednesday morning. This was Monday morning. Wednesday morning, I'm going to pick him up again. So we do the same thing on Wednesday morning, go back up there. And we get in the airplane coming home, and he's sitting there across me, and he says, you know, he says, he says I think he's going to make it. Just like that. I mean, just like I'm talking to y'all. Yeah. I, I think he's going to make it. He said, in 25 years of practice, I've never seen or heard of a patient living with what your brother's injury. He said, reach on the back of your head and feel that little bump sticking out. Yep. He said, he broke his off. He said, that protects the spinal cord. So anyway, from that time on, it was it was pretty bad because when he came to Alabama, he went into rehab. And what got me well, Dale, was my farm. I'm, I'm in the trailer at the farm. My tractor's sitting out there in the pasture with a bush hog hooked on. And I get my crutches, and I start across out the door. And Pat says, where are you going? I said, I'm going to run my tractor. She says, you can't do that. I said, yes, I can. That's rehab right there. So I go out there. I put my crotch. I got a 53 Ford hood mounted on the top of Massey Ferguson's tractor. I stick my crutches up in there, and I get up on there, and I bush hog me a circle out there. there. I come back. I get my crutches. I go back in the house. I'm sitting there. I get up and start out again. And Pat said, what are you doing now? I'm going to run my tractor again. She said, I have to go to Huey Town to get the kids from school. I said, well, you go ahead. I know how to make coffee. I know how to use the bathroom. That's the first night I ever stayed by myself. And from that time on, it was uphill climb. Well, that's what I told Bobby. Dale, I know you got a jillion letters and get well and everything like mm-hmm. that. I have a coffee table made out of a hatch cover of an old ship. It's about as long as from here to there and about yep. the widest that Xfinity sign there. And it was full of get well cards all on the floor. I'm sitting there, I'm doing get well cards. Pat says, you know, about time I did some more. I don't know why, but I got aggravated and I took my hand and I Went a lot of time, get well cards. When it, I still in boxes somewhere, I guess. And I got up. I said, "That's it. I ain't sitting around no more." And that's what got me well. To when Bobby's, you said it was so rough with Bobby though. Um, like, t- talk about that. Like, you did. Bobby didn't have a farm. What did Bobby? What was Bobby's motivation? Motivation, right? None. You. It had none. You know, every time I went around Bobby or anything else, he was doing, sitting in the same chair in the same place. Mm. And I said, Bobby, you got to get up. You got to do something. He said, I can't walk. My legs hurt. I said, well, get a wheelchair and ride then. Yeah. I said, get up. How's Bobby doing now? 
he's struggling a little bit, but he's not doing bad at all. Because, you know, when that plane ride we had with Petty, mm -hmm. you know, they said he would never, ever fly an airplane again. He said, I'm going to pass my physical. He went to Oklahoma for uh, uh, to school. Yeah. And passed his physical, got his pilot license back. Yeah. I flew with him a lot afterwards. He couldn't find an airplane as good after as he could before because he always landed about three foot off the ground. But you know, I used to be amazed because no matter how bad the weather was, whether the wind was doing anything else, you never felt Bobby Allison's airplane touch the ground when he landed. You never felt the wheels hit. I mean, he, he was probably the best I ever flew with. Hmm. But What's after his accident... He'd land about two foot off the ground every time. And yeah. that thing, I told him, I said, Bobby, you're going to stick the struts up through the wing. Yeah, he'd <laughs> land it pretty hard. <laughs> he, um, he would, you know, come back and become an owner in NASCAR and run a race team. And, um, you know, he would, he would, uh, he had a, you know, he, for, for as bad as things were in that accident, you know, he did. He did. He did. He did make a comeback physically. Um, that I think is, you know, for especially hearing what you're saying about Doctor Petty describing the injury and how severe it was, and that he was surprised that he was still alive. Um, when I look at that car and the pictures of that car from that accident in Pocono for Bobby, I can't ima I can't believe he survived it because of the destruction to the car itself. But, um, you know, I. Did you, did it, you know, was y'all's relationship from that moment on still the same all these years later? I know I've been around you two together on a couple occasions here, especially recently, and y'all's bond seems at, you, you both have this sort of innate ability to like look out for each other, look after one another. You've got each other's back like you always had, like you did in that turn three in 1979 at the Daytona 500. All of that stayed intact. Is that true? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that comes from Kitty and Ed, Mom and Pop Allison. Okay. Um, our family has always been very close. Now, we all have had problems. Uh, you know, like I said, I, I had a reputation of being a fighter. I've been in a fight with every one of my brothers. I beat all of them's butt. <laughs> uh, the only one that ever hurt me at all was my younger brother, Tommy, hit me in the back of the head with a shoe. shoe. But, uh, I mean, we've been very close. Yeah. No matter what happened, uh, it was always family first. Yeah. Um, Bobby was a little difficult sometimes because he was so independent. Yeah. You know, uh, he he always felt like he could beat anybody anywhere anytime. That if he didn't, it was his car's fault. It wasn't his fault. Yeah, we got in a we got in a pretty bad time in the '60s in the modified special, and he wrecked me on Saturday night, and I worked all night, me and my brother Eddie, and I wrecked him on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Well, I, this hand is on my shoulder, uh, and when it got on my shoulder, I knew it was my dad. My dad said, I didn't raise you boys like that. He said, you go to Bobby and straighten this out. And I said, Dad, I didn't start it. I'm not going to Bobby. He said, I said, go to Bobby and straighten it out. Well, Bobby's car owner owned a used car lot up in 3rd Avenue in Birmingham. So I go up there, and I pull around. It was a house trailer office. So I pulled around the back, and a salesman walked out about that time, and his eyes got about big as that when he saw me drive up. I said, is Bobby Allison in there? He said, yes, he is. Okay, I jumped out of the car, went in there, and there was Bobby. And I said, Bobby, I'm going to come up here because my dad told me to come. And I said, we can straighten this out in here or out there. Neither, I pointed out the back door. I, I said, let me tell you how I feel about this. I said, I'm on the left and you're on the right and we have a problem, it's my fault. You're on the right and I'm on the left or left or right and it's swapped, it's my fault. You're in the front and I'm in the back, it's my fault. I'm in the back and you're in the front, it's my fault. 50% of the damn time it's your, where I was when it was my fault. 
He said, I never thought of it like that. We never had a problem afterwards. Hey, if you like that video, you'll love the entire podcast, the Dale Jr. Download. It's available on all major podcast platforms.